there are so many better things you could spend that dollar on, like lighting it on fire. Hey nerds, um, I have no idea how I'm going to get through this video. I have no idea how I'm going to structure it or um, what kind of sense it may or may not make because I, I just read the worst book I've ever read in my life. <laughs> I, I wish I was kidding. I wish I was exaggerating, but I can't, I can't. This video is going to be an installment in my one buck book series, which is a series in which I purchase a book for a dollar and then I read it and then I talk about it, right? My brain hurts so bad right now. I think I might be dumber than I was before I started reading this book. And I didn't have the leeway. I didn't have the spare brain cells and they're just gone. So I got this book for a dollar. I got it at the Dollar Tree, which is where I get like all of my one buck book books. But God, I really, I could have picked anything that was easier to say, but that's what I went with. And when I, when I got this book, I knew like it, it probably wasn't going to be good. I knew it was probably going to be like less than average, right? Like a low three or maybe a two on a five star scale, right? Like I, I was expecting that. I was not expecting to read this book and like the entire time I was reading have this like low grade constant one pitch scream happening in the back of my head. Like I, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't, <laughs> I tried very hard in my reviews not to be mean. I try very hard to be critical when it is necessary and to call things out when I feel that it is necessary. But I don't know how to talk about this book without being an absolute fucking bitch. And so like, warning, I'm going to be a bitch talking about this book. Also, warning, um, incredibly important. Um, think of like every possibly triggering topic that could come up in a book. Um, anything that you might need a content warning for. And this is my blanket content warning for like everything. Because when I say that this book has every plot in it, there is nothing that could happen that doesn't happen in this book. Like short of like actual magic, like this is not like a sci-fi fantasy series. So short of that, everything else is on the table. And I literally couldn't list them for you because that would be the entire video is just me listing potential triggers. So just, this is me saying, while I'm not going to be talking about things in like super detail, I am going to be spoiling the hell out of this book because it needs to be spoiled because you don't want to read it. No one should read this. But if something is potentially triggering to you, just like maybe don't watch this. I don't know. But like, I can't list them all for you because I don't have that kind of time. So I've danced around it enough. <laughs> I, I, I'm delaying the start of this video because I truly don't know where to start. But I guess we're just, we're just gonna go. The book is Mirror Mirror by Cara Delevingne with Rowan Coleman. I'm going to guess that Rowan Coleman did the bulk of the writing work in here because Cara Delevingne is, as far as I know, like a supermodel and an actress. I don't know if she does like other things. This book was published in 2017. Um, so not like terribly long ago. So I feel like all of the critiques that I'm going to be making in this book you can't really make the excuse of like, oh, like, well, the time with this was written. I'm like, nah, this shit was not acceptable in 2017 and it ain't gonna fly now. So I'm gonna try and just like start from the beginning and then work my way through. But basically what you need to know at the start is that this book is like an entire season of Riverdale just like crammed into 355 pages. Like so many plot lines, so much fucking drama, like every single dramatic thing that can happen does happen and all of it is cranked up to a 10 it's just like absolutely fucking insane so let's just begin okay so it starts out um at like the beginning of a school year this whole book takes place in london i think i'm almost positive it's london there's this band called mirror mirror which is the title of the book oh by the way can we just like comment on this cover and how cara delavine's name is like the only thing you can see the title is very tiny up here at the top and it's like blends in with like the color of the arm like you can't see the title of the book because the book doesn't matter it's Cara Delevingne the assumption is going to be that you're going to buy this because you're a fan of her which is like really insulting and just like primed when I first picked up this book it primed me to think like oh so this book is gonna be shit because 
I'm not supposed to be reading this for a good experience. I'm supposed to be reading this because I want to support Cardella Bean. I don't know if she got my $1 from Dollar Tree. I'm going to guess that she didn't, though. Anyway, like I said, this band called Mira Mira, it's a high school band. There's these four people in this band. Red, who is the main character, Rose, uh, Leo, and Naomi. And at the start of this book, Naomi, who is, like, the guitarist, I think, and, like, one of the main lyricists, um, she has been missing for eight weeks at the start of the book. And so one of their teachers, who's, like, their music teacher for, like, this, this band, um, comes to the kids, like, the remaining band members, and is like, hey um why don't you put on the, this benefit concert and we can raise money to help find her which like already is weird because i'm like why who is the money for like who's getting is this not like for the cops i don't know how shit works in england but i'm like i would think that like the cops are just looking for this girl and like they're funded by tax like i don't know where this money is going or why they need it but that's what they decide to do so they audition to replace her the uh Naomi the missing girl they were they auditioned to replace her and then like just for like this concert and then as soon as they do this she's found so they find this girl like right away she's missing for like no time at all and they found her she was in I think the Thames she was in the Thames and like beat to hell like almost drowned like it's really unclear what happened to her like did she attempt suicide and then like get battered in the water or did like someone throw her in there like nobody knows but she's like super unconscious in a coma like everyone is like trying to figure out like oh no oh my god what happened to her Nothing happens for, like, a very long time. This book is, this basically book, like, the first half of this book, like, almost nothing happens. And then in the last half of this book, every single thing happens. So, like, I'm trying to remember what happened at the beginning, but, like, the answer is, like, nothing. So, like, just to describe, the, the main character's name is Red. And I'm just going to be referring to them as Red. And you'll find out why. So, the main character's name is Red. And Red is the drummer of the band. And their mom is like a massive alcoholic and they've got this younger sister Gracie who's like six or nine or something I don't fucking remember and their dad is like out of the house like wor he works a ton and he's also like having an affair and like everybody knows it then there is Rose who is the main singer of the band she is like sort of like rich, rich preppy girl but she like pretends to be this like poor tortured soul or whatever and she like fully acknowledges it's, it's an act but so like just like something she does for attention i don't know she's the worst we'll get to her in a second and then there's leo who is the no wait, leo is the guitarist naomi is the bassist who re truly doesn't matter leo comes from like this like broken home his brother is in jail for like beating the shit out of this guy or possibly murdering him i can't remember his brother older brother is in a gang it's this whole shit. Like, everybody's life is tragic. Anyway, they decide to go on with the concert anyway because they're like, oh, well, instead of raising money to help find her, which again, where was that money going to go? We're going to raise money to, like, help with her medical expenses. And I'm like, I thought y'all had universal health care, but whatever. And that's basically the last thing we hear about the concert for, like, an extremely long time. It's a dumb plot point that, like, does not become relevant basically ever, except... It Oh my god, I'm moving on. So for the first, like, huge chunk of this book, I thought that Red had a crush on Naomi because just, like, the way that they talked about um, her and the way that they talked about their friendship and, like, the way that they, like, they had so much in common. Like, I thought that Red had her, like, a, was, like, in love with Naomi. And then, like, kind of out of nowhere, it's like, oh no, Red's been in love with Rose this whole time. And I'm like, where? I didn't really see that coming. And it's super weird because Red's just like, oh, she's the most, like, amazing, beautiful, talented girl. And I'm like, first of all, Rose is a terrible person. She is a bitch to all of her friends, but Red in particular, the entire book. She has essentially no redeeming qualities. She's not a good friend. She's very mean. She fully acknowledges that, like, Red and Leo have, like, much harder lives than her and yet still pretends that she's, like, this poor, tortured person. Like, you're rich as fuck and, like, you have no issues. Please go away. I hate her. Rose is the worst. This isn't making sense. I'm so sorry that this isn't making sense, but this book doesn't make any fucking sense. And I, 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 want, I want to make it make sense for you. I really do. So at one point, Red is visiting Naomi in the hospital. And I can't remember if they're alone or not, but they find that Rose has this tattoo that she's never had before on her wrist. And it's like a super intricate, like small design of circles. And he's like, what is this? Like she did not have this before she went missing. Um, so Red and Naomi's older sister, Ashira, start working together to like figure out what happened. And it involves lots of like 
hacking and all this like really stereotypical stuff like social media and like playlists it was honestly like both confusing and boring and i'm not going to go into it but red and ashira like their big plot together is we're gonna figure out what happened to naomi right that's really all we need to know for right now at the same time like normal band things are happening and i'm like i'm sorry if my one of my best friends goes missing and like mysteriously returns i'm not like fucking focused on a band like like i've got other shit going on like I, I i don't care i don't care about this like i care about my friends in the band and like our relationship but like doing music shit is just like not what's on the menu right now like i don't get the point of the concert oh my god i have to just move on so like there's this weird gang stuff with leo right so like his brother gets out of jail um just like randomly in the middle of the night just like shows up one night and he's like i'm out of jail now which like i don't think that's how that works but what do i know so just like shows up he's like hella abusive to leo and his mother and like he starts dragging leo into this like weird gang shit that like truly comes out of nowhere it's so forced into this and it's like just i think the point of it is to inject like this secondary sense of tension which i'm like is the girl in the coma who mysteriously disappeared and then mysteriously reappeared that's not enough tension you need to add this like weird gang thing there's like I don't I truly I don't get it I don't get it it's it's terrible I'm just gonna move past it but there's gang shit and gang violence cool Rose has this secret boyfriend who is older um Red is like really upset by this they don't know like who this older guy is or like how serious it is but Rose is acting like hella sketchy like can, keeps like flitting off to like be with this older guy Red's like both concerned for her safety which is valid and then also like jealous which is like also kind of valid but like not really and then Leo's also in love with Rose and so Rose and or <laughs> Red and Leo are like commiserating together like neither one of them would like, acknowledge that the other one is in love with her but like everyone's aware again Rose is the worst character I don't know why a single person continues to talk to her but I'm just going to get to the big plot twist of this book now because I can't keep dancing around it and I have to say off the bat that this is a plot twist that I thought of myself when I was about 16 and I thought this is the most clever thing and one day I'm gonna write a book and I'm going to use this plot twist and everyone's gonna be so blown away and I'm gonna be a fucking young adult literature hero um and then I grew the fuck up and realized how dumb it is but not Karen Levine <laughs> she thought it was brilliant too and the plot twist is that Red was a girl the whole time and I say that this is a plot twist because like from the beginning it was like very unclear what Rose's gender identity or like sexual orientation was um everything was like gender neutral terms no pronouns were used but Red may have been gotten called like dude a couple of times but like in a very like casual way I can't even remember that but like I noted it from the beginning I was like okay so we know that this band has Rose and Naomi who are girls and Leo who's a guy and Red is unclear so like it was from the beginning it was like a question I eventually settled on like I guess Rose is a guy like everything kind of points towards that just like from the way Red describes herself and all this stuff and I was like I guess but like I was never sold on it it was just like I, I don't know whatever who I stopped caring because this book does nothing to make you care about any of its characters but then one day Rose and Red first of all they have they fight all of the time like there's this one scene where the two of them have these huge blow up fights and both of them say like truly horrifically nasty things together and then they just like walk home together like nothing weird happened and like I would have stormed away and also like unfriended you and everything whatever so at one point they are together hanging out in rose's house and rose starts like full-on like snuggling with red and like laying on top of her and all this stuff and they have this like moment and then like red goes in for a kiss and like like misreads the situation and goes in for the kiss and rose is like what the fuck i wasn't trying to kiss you and then the book goes i'm gonna find it hold on so it's on page 221 220 pages into this novel we get red i'm not like you i'm straight i don't kiss girls and it's meant to be this like holy shit reveal and i was just cackling i just like cackled for 20 minutes because like this is the dumbest shit i've ever read like i can't i can't i can't 
And so we find out that Red's been a girl the entire time. And so in the first 220 pages, no one ever referred to Red using any kind of like gendered words or anything like that. And Red's gender never came up in anything. And then for the rest of the book, she could not have been called a girl more times. Like, I think that her girlness or slash lesbianness was acknowledged more times in the final like 100 and what 70 80 pages of this book whatever it was acknowledged more times in the second half of this book than i have been called a girl in 25 and a half years of fucking existing like it was just drilled home that she was a girl and it was so <laughs> it was so fucking ridiculous and it's just like there's no excuse for that in 2017 like i said i thought if i had read this when i was like 15 my mind would have been fucking blown but also i was like 15 in 2010? 2010. There's like no, there's no excuse for this. And then the truly wild thing happens. Uh, it turns out Rose had been um, sexually assaulted at a party once, like a year or two before, or like early, like earlier in her, much, much before the start of the story. And Red knew this. And so after Red tries to kiss her, Rose goes on social media and full on tells everybody essentially that Red tried to rape her. And it's fucking insane. Like, just straight up tries to destroy her one of her best friend's life for, like, a moment. Like, and Red's, like, totally fine with it. Like, Red, like, is, like, I understand, like, you know, she's traumatized and all this stuff. And, like, I messed up. And it's, like, yeah, you should not have tried to kiss your friend without permission. Like, sure. But you didn't, like, people were threatening to, like, kill and rape her and like beat her up in response to this and like rose like tripled down like would not apologize and eventually like a hundred pages later like finally apologizes and red's like it's okay i'm like no you need to end this friendship this book bitch is toxic as fuck like she actively tried to destroy your life over like there's so many, there's so many, like, plot points and like, I'm just, like, glossing over it. Like, the fact, like, I said Red's mom is a massive alcohol alcoholic and she totally is. And, and you know, she flips out because, like, she hates the fact that Red looks like a lesbian. And then Red says that she is a lesbian. And they have this huge fight and Red's mom ends up punching her. This was wild. At one point, Red is on her dad's laptop i think trying to find evidence of an affair and for some reason comes to the conclusion that like because he has locked files on his computer thinks that he must have child pornography on his computer and then ashira the hacker big sister of the girl coma girl hacks into the laptop and is like no it's fine don't worry about it which is just like so what was the point of that? It lasts like four chapters and then that plot line is done with. But I'm like, okay, that was a thing we did. For some reason, even after Rose has accused one of her bandmates of rape on a, or attempted sexual assault on a massive platform, the concert's still on. Why Red is even in the same room with her, can't, cannot imagine. So this concert's still happening. Again, I still don't know why. Um, Red and Ashira are still working together. They're putting together all these dumb puzzle pieces to figure out what happened to Naomi, uh, who's still in a coma. It's been weeks now or whatever. There's more gang shit with Leo that gets like really tense. And like, honestly, I don't care. So we're just gonna move past it. At one point, like in the middle of the book, um, before we find out that Red is a lesbian and we still think like maybe he's a guy, he goes, he just like needs to get away. So he goes to this like nearby town or whatever meets this girl at a bar and then sees that the um and they like have this flirtation and then the girl at the bar has a tattoo that is like really similar to naomi's but and it, oh, by the way it turns out naomi's tattoo is like comprised of these like n it's like very tiny numbers and and letters and stuff like it's some kind of code so the girl has a very similar tattoo. You know, Red takes that information to Ashira and they figure out, oh, hey, this tattoo is half of a link to a dark website. And it these tattoos are used to keep track of sex slaves. So Naomi's been used as a sex slave. That's where she was for eight weeks before she was found. Because this book has every plot line in it. So they do all this tracking information, blah, blah, blah. And they find out that Naomi had a secret 
lover before she went missing and who was that secret lover it was the teacher from the beginning and who's like been in this book kind of like as a background character the entire time the music teacher who suggested they put on the concert in the first place so they're like holy fuck this teacher that we all love and we all trusted he's been seducing girls um to like fall in love with him and then he traps them in places and then uses them as sex slaves oh and then they find <laughs> and then they find out that the guy that rose has been secretly seeing is him as well and she's his next target because this guy like keeps picking girls from the school he works at which is like great a moron like what how dumb do you have to be like i don't want to tell predators how to do their jobs right like i don't want to give you advice i don't want to like make things easier for you but like maybe don't kidnap people who are all connected to the place that you work and maybe especially don't kidnap two different girls who are like directly connected to the class you teach. So they decide not to tell Rose that she is a full-on predator. By the way, Red has been suggesting this entire time, every time like they get a new piece of information, she's like, maybe we go to the police. And Ashira, the older sister, is like, no, we're not going to go to the police. And Red's like, okay. And then they find like literally like dark web shit that like connects a bunch of like formerly missing girls together. Um, some of whom have like killed themselves and she's still like not fam we're not gonna go to the police i'm like you literally like now you're committing a crime like so they go on with a concert and this concert is going to have like this photo montage of naomi in it and they like hijack the photo montage and make it f and uh the photo montage is going to be full of like evidence of naomi's affair with the teacher and then like evidence of like the teacher's like screenshots and stuff that he has committed crimes and things and then they do that at the concert and rose realizes she's been in love with a predator this entire time which like yeah bitch he's your teacher then naomi wakes up and everyone's still friends and i aged about 10 billion years um i'm actually i've died and then being re reincarnated like a lot of times over the course of reading this book i am so tired i'm so tired so the plot is bad I don't know if you managed to ascertain anything in the last however long um, that that was. I don't know if any of it made sense, but if it didn't, that's okay because this book, like the plot of this book does not make any sense either. So many things are happening all of the time. It's, it's so much. It's at least half of the plots in this book needed to fucking go. There was no need for anything to do with Leo and his like gangbanger brother. All of that needed to go. Served the story literally not at all. You could have easily cut out a good 75 pages of this book just for that bullshit. Anything to do with Red and the I'm a lesbian plot twist absolutely needs to go. That was awful. Holy shit. And like, I know Cara de Levine is queer, isn't she? Like, didn't she date like Ashley Benson or something? I don't know. I feel like she was in like a relationship with a woman for like a non insignificant amount of time. She might still be in a relationship with a woman. I don't know. I feel like Cara de Levine is definitely queer. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is what a, a very baby queer comes up with. Like I was saying earlier, when I was like 15, 16, I had an idea for a book where it was like, it's gonna be a romance between two people and I'm gonna trick the audience into thinking it's a heterosexual romance it's between like a guy and a girl. And then at the very end, I'm gonna twist it around on them and it's gonna have been two girls the entire time, right? Like I thought I was so clever. And it's just like, nah bitch you're 15 no offense to 15 year olds but like ideas you have when you're 15 are write them down but then like revisit them in a couple years and you're gonna see like they're not that great but it's fine it's fine to have shitty ideas when you're 15 it's not fine to have shitty ideas when you're Carla de Levine's age and you have access to a publishing company I don't know how to describe the actual writing in this because it's like good in every single way except for the fact that it's bad and I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's the best I can do. Like, I feel like if you read any individual sentence in this book, you'd be like, oh, like, that's, that's not bad. But when you put them all together, she manages to use a lot of words to say nothing. This book is just, like, full of telling. Like, even when sort of descriptions of things aren't that bad, whenever she's describing how someone feels or what, what like, Red thinks about something, like, it's just all telling. It's just, like, telling you what's happening, telling you what people are feeling, telling you what they're thinking, um, telling you, you know, questions. It's all telling. There's no actual depth to anything. 
I really don't know how to describe it. All of the sentences feel very empty. Like there were times where I would read like 20 pages and it only took me like 15 minutes, but I would feel like I had been reading for an hour. Like that's how tired my brain was. Like it was just like so, each sentence was so boring. Not only that, no, like I don't want to sound like I'm some kind of saint or anything. I love swearing. I've been swearing for many years now. I'm fairly prodigious at it. The characters in this book swear so fucking much. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. Every other word out of all of their mouths is a swear word. And it does nothing. It doesn't serve the story. It's so obnoxious. And it's like, I get that you're teenagers and I get that you're in an edgy band or whatever. But like, you sound dumb as hell. And like, it just, it's so annoying to read. I go back and forth on how I feel about like swearing in movies and stuff. Like at what point I think it's too much. Sometimes I really like it and sometimes it bothers me. But in a book, when like you see the word just like written out on the page, like there's sometimes you'll have a paragraph that's like, I don't know, three or four sentences long and you'll have easily 10 swear words. It doesn't serve the story. It doesn't ha help me get to know these characters any better. It's just like, oh, I get it. They all think they're cool and they're all very not. One thing that is, very clear from this book is that Cara Delevingne like thought she was on some shit like so she names it mirror mirror right it's all about like reflections and in the dedication she dedicates it to anyone who feels lost I hope this book inspires you to follow your dreams and to never give up hope anything is possible which is not what this book is about this book has nothing to do with following dreams other than the lesbian plotline I guess it has nothing to do with following dreams like there's this Q&A at the very end and the first question is, what, where did the idea for Mirror Mirror come from? What inspired you? And she writes, I really wanted to write a novel that showed an uncensored picture of how difficult and painful it can be to become an adult. There's so much pressure on young people to be perfect. And I wanted to show that whoever you are, if you are happy with yourself, then you are perfect. But that's not what this book is about. This book has nothing to do with people pretending to be perfect or trying to be perfect or like trying to be someone they're not. Like, once we the audience find out that red is a lesbian it's like it's made pretty clear to us that like she hasn't been hiding this that she's just been like kind of quiet and doing her own thing but it's not like she's been pretending to not be a lesbian this whole time it's not like i mean rose is the only one who's like pretending to be something she's not but like she's fully open about it she's like yeah this, she even says like this is an act i put on so like no one's trying to pretend they're being to be someone that they're not i feel like what she wanted this story to be about is 100 percent not what it's about at all this has nothing to do with anything I am so tired. I think I have to stop talking about this book now. The thing that's funny is that like this book is sort of like the opposite of Leave the World Behind by Ramon Alam, which I reviewed on this channel before. Because like that book had no plot at all and the writing was like super pretentious and shit and I had a really hard time getting through it because it was so boring. But I, n I never really considered DNFing it. This one has every plot that has ever existed. It is in here. Like this is all of the plots, but it was still so boring. I kept having to put it down other than today when I just like had to f literally force myself to get through it. I could only read it for like maximum 20 minutes at a time, maybe 25. I just couldn't do it. It was so cringy. It tried so hard. It wanted to be absolutely everything it wanted to say everything and do everything and be about everything all in one book and it failed to do anything it said nothing at the end of this i'm like is the lesson to not trust men on the internet is the lesson to forgive your friends even when they like falsely accuse you of a really serious crime red is also just like super forgiving not only does she forgive naomi for like trying to ruin her life but she forgives her mother for hitting her and i'm like you need to like start holding some grudges. Be a little meaner, I'm gonna say. Throwing that out there. But this book tries so hard and it just doesn't accomplish anything. It fails on every level. I don't know who Rowan Coleman is, who, like I said, I think probably did a lot of the heavy lifting on this book, but someone needed to sit Carl Delavine down and say like, you have about 50 ideas here. We're gonna need you to pick three and just like stick with those. Cause there was just too much happening and none of it made sense. None of it fit with each other. I just, yeah, I I am proud of myself for finishing it just because it was so hard. It was so hard to finish. I could tell early on that this is going to be a one-star book for me. And I kept telling myself, like, you don't know, like, it could earn a two. Things can get better and things just didn't get better. The second half of the book was definitely more 
interesting, but only because so much crazy ass shit was happening that I'm like, I have to know what's going on next simply because whatever I predict is not going to be true because this is fucking insane. Like I said, it felt like a season of Riverdale. We're just like, we need every kind of plot line. We need all of them together in one, just everything happening. Which is really weird because like I said, in the first half, nothing happens. I feel like the first like actual plot thing happens like a hundred pages in or something like that. I, I made a mental note of it and then immediately forgot it because this is who I am as a person. <gasps> oh, I forgot to mention this. So the very last question in the Q&A, can readers expect to read more about the lives of Red, Leo, Naomi, and Rose? Will there be a follow-up? And she says, there's definitely so much more story to tell for these characters. So there certainly could be a follow-up, but you'll have to wait a bit longer to find out. How could there be more story? You told all of the stories. All of the stories are in here. Every single story that anyone has ever written is in here. All of them, every story. Every single plot is in this one book. Honestly, it's a feat that you managed to do it. No, there is no more story to tell. You told them all. Okay, I said I was done like five minutes ago and I'm still talking. So I'm actually done now. Like I said, this book is a one star book. You do not have to read it. Um, I do not recommend you even go out to the Dollar Tree and get it for $1. There are so many better things you could spend that dollar on, like lighting it on fire. There is nothing, nothing <laughs> you need to read this book for. It will not, <laughs> it does not make sense. Save yourself, please. Oh my god, I can't, I can't believe how badly I hate this book. Oh my god. Let me know in the comments if you have read this book, um, if you disagree with me. The book has like a 3.6 something rating on Goodreads, which I don't know how much I can trust because like she's Cara Delevingne, so like I'm sure she has a lot of fans who just like went and rated it five stars just because. I will say that I scrolled through like the reviews that like came up first but there were a couple like four or five stars and then like a lot of ones and twos after that so i don't know but yeah this book sucked there's there's really no way around it this book sucked really 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 hard sorry that this was what this was but it is what it is so thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one okay bye